Thank you, Ruby. Um, my name is Andrew and I'm a Trove Outreach Officer at the National Library of Australia. So today we will be having a look at the Australian Web Archive, which is good timing as today also marks three months from when the Australian Web Archive was officially launched. In a world first, the Australian Web Archive is a fully searchable online collection available through Trove, which brings together the past 23 years of Australian culture its people, places and events as represented on the internet. Just as Australian print publications such as books, magazines and newspapers have changed over the years, so too has the internet changed. And the Australian Web Archive is an important national collection that has documented these changes through Australia's history. So to give you a taste of the ways that the Australian internet has changed over the past 23 years, I thought I would start by having a look back through this period with a selection of websites that can be found on the Australian Web Archive. And in order to, that, to do that, I will switch my video off. So, if we go back to 1996, one of the earliest websites on the archive is from the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. It was a simpler time with some interesting colour schemes. But you can also get some insight into the, to the kinds of services that they first offered online, with net banking not so far away. It was also around this time that the National Library of Australia launched its first website. You see, you can see here that it looks a lot different than it does today. It's mostly text-based. And we had a different Prime Minister. And here is the first archived website for an Australian Prime Minister with some very stylish wood panelling decoration, a calendar of his appearances, transcripts of his speeches and interview, and even a kids page with a multiple choice quiz about the Australian government, which you can still use to test your knowledge now. But even then, organisations were starting to use the internet for lobbying purposes. Here we have this site promoting the yes vote at the 1999 referendum in regard to the Australian Republican debate. The year 2000 was a big year for Sydney. Along with the Olympic Games, they also launched their airport rail link. On this site, you could get information about tickets back when it would have only cost $15 to travel return from Central Station to Sydney International Airport. In 2001, we had the centenary of Federation with a wide range of events publicized through their website. And the internet also became a valuable source of sports information with sporting news, games coverage, and information about the various teams. You could even download icons and ringtones for your favorite team to put onto your phone. Farther afield, the web was also used by the Australian government to deliver information on operations in the wider Asia Pacific region, such as their mission to the Solomon Islands in 2003. 2004 saw the completion of the Garn Railway to Darwin and people could buy their own tickets online from the website. And websites became a way for cultural festivals to provide detailed information on their events, such as the Sydney Writers Festival, providing details on their sessions and guest speakers. And of course, you could keep up with your favorite television celebrities um, and follow Bert Newton's transition from Good Morning Australia to Bert's Family Feud. You could find out which bands were playing at your favorite music events and at what times. And as you can see, websites were becoming um, somewhat more colorful and interactive. After the change of government in 2007, you can always look back at the ways that politicians use the web for communicating, especially in the late 2000s, which saw big changes in the web with social media emerging. You could also download the official photograph of the Prime Minister, if you so desired. 2009 was a big year for the National Library. Trove was launched, bringing together a range of online collections through one single portal. We can look back at prize winners in artistic awards, such as the Archibald Prize, or look at how online campaigns focused on the prevalent issues of the time, such as the price on carbon in 2011. 
2012 saw the introduction of the Queensland Literary Awards, a community-driven awards program, and in 2013, Canberra celebrated its own centenary with a vibrant calendar of events and programs. And so we can see how Australia celebrated the influential people of its time, as illustrated here with the announcements of the winners and finalists of the Australian of the Year in 2014. And we can also see how pivotal events were reported in the news media online. Also of interest was how government websites handled opportunities for innovation, such as the online census in 2016. And finally, we can reminisce on more recent events, which may already feel like a distant memory. Whatever your personal interests, whether you're researching people, places and events in recent Australian history, or just wanting to go down a virtual rabbit hole of nostalgia, the Australian Web Archive has something for everybody. <clears throat> of course, the Australian Web Archive has been a long time in the making. In 1996, the internet was relatively new and had limited usage in society. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, only 4% of households had a dial-up modem, which is how they would have connected to the internet over the phone line. For everybody else, there were public and state libraries where you would need to book ahead to get internet access. And we also had internet cafes, who remembers them? It was also in this year that the National Library of Australia established Pandora, one of the world's first web archives, alongside the Internet Archive in San Francisco and the Bibliotheca Alexandrina in Egypt. You can see here a timeline of web archiving around the world, which I should point out I was only able to find by using a web archive. But it's interesting to see the gradual uptake of other countries in setting up their own web archives over the following 15 years. So the National Library's first web archive, Pandora, was an acronym of Preserving and Accessing Network Documentary Resources of Australia. This was a curated archive of selected Australian online publications, such as electronic journals, organisational websites, and government publications, all selected for their cultural significance, and then indexed for browsing by title or subject area. In its first year from October 1996, around 30 or so websites were downloaded. 22 years later, this has grown to over 57,000 websites. And by 2003, it had become a searchable site which was eventually incorporated into Trove's search platform. In 2014, the Australian Government Web Archive was also launched as a service distinct from the Pandora Archive. It included Commonwealth Government websites dating back to 2005, and this was a particularly useful tool given the, the changing nature of government departments, which meant that websites and links were also often changing. Without a web archive, much of this content might have been lost. And in 2017, this collection of Commonwealth government websites were amalgamated into the Trove Web Archive. In addition, starting in 2005, the National Library began to conduct annual large scale harvests of Australian domain content. That is to say websites ending with .au. Now, when it comes to the National Library's physical collection, much of the collecting work is guided by legal deposit legislation, which is a requirement for all Australian publications to be deposited with the library's collections. In 2016, changes to the legislation came into effect, which expanded this law to include electronic publications, and with them, Australian online content. With this in place, the stage was set for the National Library to provide public access to all of this content on the Australian Web Archive. As I mentioned, the Australian Web Archive was launched three months ago on the 5th of March. This was a project that aimed to bring together all of these elements which I've just mentioned. We have Pandora, the Australian Government Web Archive, and archived Australian domain websites. And we wanted to make these all discoverable in the one place. Not only did it need to be collected, but it also needed to be indexed so that it could all be searchable. And to give you a breakdown of how much content we're talking about, 
we've made a handy pie chart here. As you can see, the recent addition of the Australian Domain websites adds significantly to the material that was previously available. This is one of the world's largest fully indexed, openly searchable archives of web content. There are about 600 terabytes of data across 9 billion records in the Australian Web Archive, which is a staggering amount of information. And to put that in context, if you printed a 600 terabyte Word document, it would stretch from Canberra to Cairns. The Australian Web Archive can be accessed from any device with an internet connection. You don't need to visit the library to use it, and it's absolutely free to use. It's also important to understand what the Web Archive isn't. Firstly, it's an archive of Australian websites that are publicly available and free of charge. So anything that wasn't made public, like for example, your private email, or kept behind a subscription paywall, should not be findable on the archive. Secondly, it only consists of websites that were selected for their significance to Australia, or those websites that were harvested from the AU domain. Websites whose addresses do not end with .au, for example, will not necessarily have been captured onto the web archive. The web archive cannot be used to view flash content on websites, and there's very limited access to audio and video material. Finally, there is also very limited social media content with only some Twitter feeds and YouTube videos that had been chosen for preservation by professional web archivists. So this sounds good in theory, but I'm sure you're keen to see how it all works. So let's go into it. Firstly, to search the Australian Web Archive, you need to go to Trove. The address for Trove is trove.nla.gov.au. However, if you're on the library's website, nla.gov.au, you can scroll down and click on the link to Trove. From here, you can see we have an array of different options. But for now, we want to select archived websites, 1996 to now. And here we are have arrived the main search page for the Australian Web Archive. From here, if we enter the URL or address of the website, um, for example, if we went nla.gov.au, the National Library's website, it takes us through to what is the earliest captured snapshot of the website. In this case, the 19th of October 1996 at 4.42 p.m., which incidentally was a Saturday afternoon. However, this is one of a series of many, many snapshots, a saved copy of the website as it existed on that day and time. You can also see here that there is this box with some information in it. This box is called the Snapshot Remote, and this is your tool for navigating through the timeline of snapshots for any website that you view on the web archive. You can maximize or minimize it using this little button in the top corner. So we've made it disappear and we've made it reappear. You can also uh, move this, the snapshot remote around by clicking and dragging the box around the page. So for example, if it's blocking some information you want to read, you can just move it out of the way. On the left sidebar, over here, we have a number of tabs which provide information about the archived web page that you are looking at. First, we have the Details tab. This provides details about the snapshot of the web page that you are viewing, including the title, the date archived and time, the URL of the original website, and links to related information such as Trove catalog records. Next down, we have the Collections tab. If the website snapshot appears as part of a collection of sites, it will be listed here. Thirdly, the Site button provides handy ready-made citations for the site that you are viewing in a number of standard forms. And so you can cut and paste the citation and use it to reference the website. 
coming back to the snapshot remote, on the left side here, we can see the date and the time of the snapshot. And then on the right, we've got some of our navigational tools. The top arrows here allow you to move backwards and forwards through the timeline, one snapshot at a time. So using these arrows, we can effectively move forwards and backwards in time through each snapshot, as I'm demonstrating here. And then we can go back. So these are just going forwards and backwards, one snapshot at a time. Of course, um, it would be very slow to, to view them all one snapshot at a time. So we have a few other tools. Um, underneath here, these two um, arrows uh, takes you firstly to the earliest snapshot of the page in 1996. And then it'll take you, the other, the, the arrow to the right can take you to the latest snapshot of this website. And in this case, this was May to 10th of May, 2019. Another way of navigating the web archive is to use the timeline, which you can view either by clicking on this little clock here, and it pops up at the bottom of the page, or we can also see this little arrow here where you can make that pop up and you're also viewing the timeline here. From here, you can see the, the range of dates that the website was, um, where you can see the range of dates where snapshots were taken for, for the website. Um, and from here, we can see that it's been saved from 1996 through to 2019. These bar graphs show you how many times a snapshot was taken in, of the website in that year. So we can see that many snapshots were taken in 2014 and 2010. Um, in other years, they have been a little more intermittent. Um, and then at the very bottom here, we have a list of dates for each snapshot. Um, you can scroll through those dates using the scroll bar. And if you pick a particular date, say the 13th of March, 2010, by hovering over that date, you can see a little smaller image that shows what the uh, page looked like, or you can click on the page, click on the date, and it will load the snapshot from that date. Our final um, navigational tool that I'll mention is the calendar tool here. Again, back in the snapshot remote, there's a little picture of a calendar. And if you select that, here now we have the same timeline of years along the top here, um, but for each year, it shows a calendar which, in which you can see which dates the website was um, saved. So on the calendar, you can hover over a particular date and you'll again see a little picture that shows what the site looked at, like. And if you click on it, it will load that snapshot. So there we have that. Now at any time, we have these tools along the top of the page and we can always return back to the main search page for the Australian Web Archive by clicking on archived web pages here. So, before we go any further, I thought this would be a good opportunity to stop for any questions so far. Yes, thank you, Andrew. We do have one quick question that's come in from Christopher, and I'm not sure if we can necessarily answer this one as it is a little bit of a technical question. But Christopher's asked, the bar graphs are not showing for me, comes up as a broken image. So I believe that was under the timeline section. Oh. So have you come across this before, Andrew? I have not come up across this so far. Um, I would suggest um, we would have to um, get in touch with us independently and we can um, have a look into it further. Yeah, definitely. And Chris, if you could provide um, even just a little bit more information today, maybe we can look at this um, towards the end of the session as well. Yeah. Um, but hopefully no one else is experiencing any odd oddities in the website, but that's all, thanks. Okay. So as I mentioned before, the Australian Web Archive is fully text searchable. This means that whilst it's really useful if you know the address of the website you want to look at, you can also search for keywords. For example, if you wanted to search for 
say, Margaret and David's film reviews from the ABC show at the movies. You can search for the phrase at the movies. I'm going to put them in quotation marks to make it a phrase search. And click search. <clears throat> You'll see there's a big list of results. In fact, we have 1.159 million snapshots um, because the, the phrase at the movies is quite a common phrase. So when we look at our results, you can also see that it shows the URL or web address for each of these results. Um, since, the, since at the movies was an ABC site, we can see that it's probably one of these under abc.net.au. So I'm just going to click on that. And it's taking us back to June 2014. And there they are, Margaret and David, looking glamorous on their couches. And I might just go to the home page for at the movies. Yeah. So now we're looking at the uh, snapshot for at the movies on the ABC in June 2014. If we want to look at the timeline by clicking up at the bottom, we can see that the majority of, uh, of captures for this snapshot were taken from 2004 to 2014, which incidentally was the period of time that the show ran for on the ABC. So if you're looking for a film review, you can either browse through these years and say pick a random date uh, if you're just curious as to what they were reviewing on say the 18th of December 2010. Sometimes we'll get a redirect message um, and there we have it. You can see in, um, on this date which is yeah, 28th of December 2010 they were reviewing a number of films. They were reviewing The King's Speech, Blue Valentine, Morning Glory, Unstoppable, etc. You can see their, their star ratings. But if you wanted to click on one of them, say King's Speech, it will give you the full review as delivered on the website at the time, as well as um, a transcript of the conversation that they had when they were reviewing that film on the TV show. Of course, if you just wanted to search through a list of all of the films that they reviewed, just go back to the home page. We can go back to, we can go up to um, December 2014, which was when they had their big finale. But if you go to the movie reviews page, you can see that they've kept an archive of all of their film reviews, which you can view by year, by alphabetically by title, or, you know, if you're curious about which films got the best ratings or which films you might want to avoid if, unless you like watching terrible movies. It's all very subjective, of course. <coughs> Now, when searching, as I mentioned before, um, you have options for limiting your results. When you're viewing the website, al along the top here, we still have our Trove search bar. And this little button here, which is really useful, is a way of limiting the domain of the site that you are searching. So here, because we're already on the abc.net.au site, it gives you the option to limit your results to that domain. And so if I wanted to search specifically for a review of No Country for Old Men, to pick a random title, I could search at the movies just to help um, limit the results to this site. And No Country for Old Men. Again, I'm using the quotation marks to create a phrase search rather than a, a single keyword search. I click the results. And here we have, again, we're back in our results view. We can see that there are 238 snapshots of 
pages that match the, the phrase at the movies and no country for old men. And right at the top here, we have a review from 17th of September, 2014, which was my birthday. And um, yeah, and we have their review for No Country for Old Men, which got five stars from both Margaret and David. If we go back to our results, we can also see a few other interesting um, features which you might be interested in. For example, we have a, a review here where David spoke to the Coen brothers who directed the film No Country for Old Men. And so the, it's, this is really useful for seeing and discovering other um, content on the web archive which might be related to what you're looking for. Um, there's other interesting things like um, you know, links to uh, viewer poll results, for example, and that people can vote for their favorite films in 2007, or maybe some of the, fa the farewell messages where people discussed their favorite films on the, the web forum um, through their message board. Now, if we go back to the web archive, homepage here. Um, one thing that you need to bear in mind is quite often when you're creating a new search, we need to clear everything that we searched for before. But you can further control your results by using the advanced search tool. Here, we can specify keywords and phrases and limit your results by the domain, i.e. The, the last parts of the web address, uh, by the date, or by the file format type. Um, just to go over some of these functions, um, the snapshot date, um, the format that we, we use is we start with the year and then the two digits that correspond with the month and then the day. And so we have the beginning date here and we have the end date here. And you can also limit your results by file format. So if you're interested in finding PDFs or PowerPoint presentations, then um, this is a really good tool for limiting and filtering those results. So for example, if I wanted to look at past federal budgets in Australia, I could search for the phrase federal budget and limit the date to a specific year. Let's just say 2008. So because it's just the year 2008, I'm putting 2008 in both the beginning and end dates. And it actually fills out automatically from the 1st of the 1st, so the 1st of January through to the 12th, uh, the 31st of December. Um, so that covers the whole year of results. And if we look at our results, now there's quite a lot of stuff there, 132,721. However, we can limit the results say to a specific domain. So we can link, limit it to a Australian government web domain by clicking on this button here. And now we're down to 40,000 snapshots. Or alternatively, if we wanted to look at other perspectives, we can change the domain that we're looking at. So if we're not, we're not gonna look at government websites, but instead we could search for um, say news media um, responses. So here we've got a, um, an article about the federal budget in 2008 in the Sydney Morning Herald. And so you can see some of the ways that the news media reported on these events. Or alternatively, um, we could change that domain to a org.au and maybe look at how the federal budget of that year, of that year um, affected, uh, say, non-government organisations. And so we've got um, results from various um, non-government organisations, I guess, having a look at the federal budget and responding accordingly. To use another example, 
If we were to search the web archive on content for climate change, and I'll go back just to the main search here, and just do the phrase search for climate change without any filters, we get over 55 million snapshot results, which is far too many to read through. We can limit that to .gov.au uh, web domain, and that brings it down to just under 22 and a half million. Or we can go to our advanced search. Now, as I mentioned, we have to reset some of these entries, so I'm clearing what we were searching before. But we limit that to edu.au for the phrase climate change. Now we're looking at about 2.7 million results. Again, we can filter down a bit further and say we just want um, educational um, websites about climate change that were published from 1996 to 1999. Go back to the very beginning of the web archive. We click search. Now we're down to a little over eight and a half thousand snapshots. Well, finally, if we want to do a bit of a, if we want to limit by file type, say we just wanted um, educational resources from this period that were saved as PDF publications, we can click PDF. And that takes us through to various PDF files in relation to climate change. Now this has been a relatively random um, selection of, of um, results, but it, it shows how we can really narrow down um, our results based on uh, a number of different variables. Um, considering that with a web archive, time is a huge factor, um, as in the archive picks up different snapshots from different times. I highly recommend making the most of being able to narrow your results by date. So I know what you're all thinking. Why can't we just Google this? Wouldn't that be so much easier? So I wanted to demonstrate what happens sometimes when we, we try and Google for these kind of things. And to use our at the movies example, I will search for at the movies, I'll put ABC just to help the search string along. And look, yeah, look, here we have at the movies website um, in our results. That's all looking pretty promising. And if I click on visit website, ah, okay. So looks like the website has been taken down or at least the address may have been changed, but for whatever reason, we can no longer find this content. And when you're searching the web, this happens quite often, can happen quite often. Um, it can be quite an annoying stumbling block um, with what we refer to as a dead link. And it can be quite frustrating for a researcher. It's much like going to a library shelf only to find that the book that you're looking for is no longer there. However, if you have the specific URL, or the website address, you can paste it and copy it from the address bar, and paste it into our web archive, and there it is. So now when you're searching for something online and you get a dead link, the web archive can be absolutely useful in finding that page back when it was still available online. Now the web archive, the Australian web archive is also a fantastic tool for Australian biographical research, especially if you're doing research into a public figure that has had some presence online in the past 23 years. For example, I recently saw an interview with Australian composer, actor and comedian Tim Minchin, where he talked a little about his lesser known work that he created prior to his rise to success in 2005. So we can use the Australian Web Archive to look at the various things he did back when he was relatively unknown. So if we go to the advanced search, I am going to search for the phrase Tim mentioned. Make sure we spell it right. Clear the domain. 
Now I'm going to leave the from snapshot date blank because it's anything up to the end of 2004. If I click search, you have 494 snapshots, which in the scheme of things is relatively small, but it also creates a fascinating retrospective on Tim Minchin's relatively unknown work, um, creating music, being in theater, theatrical productions and working in arts festivals. Um, I had no idea, for example, in 2003, that he was uh, featured on Triple J's Unearthed, where he wrote a song where he um, names his favorite artists as being the Beatles, Ben Folds, and High Five. And if you look through, you can click to different websites which have reviews, promotional material, even musical, um, uh, yeah, theatres and radio stations. To use another example, if we wanted to look back at the Commonwealth Games in 2006, we would search for the phrase Commonwealth Games. This time we will Limit the snapshot dates to 2006 and 2006. Search. Now we can see right up the top there is the official Melbourne 2006 Commonwealth Games website. But what's really interesting is that you can also see how other organisations either contributed to the Commonwealth Games or responded to the Commonwealth Games. Um, and you can see a whole array of different perspectives as they were promoted and reported on through the website, through the wild, through the World Wide Web. For example, we can look at Australia Post, for example, created commemorative stamps that we can see here. To give one more example, in early 2008, there was the um, apology for the stolen generation, to use a more political topic. So if we are looking at different perspectives and responses to the stolen generation speech apology in February 2008, we can, we, we can limit our results to 2008-02, which is February 2008. Again, let's check that everything else is cleared. We can search. And here we have quite a lot of, quite, quite a lot of um, information considering this is down, limited down to one month of the Australian internet. But we can see that it was a very hot topic that many different organizations and government agencies and councils and commentators responded to. And so we can look back there and view the different perspectives of its time. Now, the Australian Web Archive is a fantastic way of investigating Australian life in a specific time and place. So one fantastic site I recently found was the University of Technology Sydney's virtual open day. Um, so I'm just going to go straight to the address because I know it. We could also search for this um, using a keyword search, but I'll save us some time. And we, here we have it, the virtual open day for the University of Technology Sydney as it was presented back in 1998. And it won an award that year for the best Australian tertiary education website. So this really showcases the kind of technology people were dealing with at the time, but it also showcases perspectives of different students, describing in their own words, their life living in Sydney as a university student and their experiences of studying at the University of Technology Sydney. Whilst it's mostly image and text based, the content is really rich in information about their lives at the time. Not 
Another useful website that I recently discovered is Telstra's Springboard, which provides a unique insight into Australian culture in the late 90s, providing links to the prominent websites of the time. So, go back to 1997 again. Here, what we have here is basically a categorized list of selected Australian websites that were seen as being quite, I guess, prominent in the time. Um, one thing I quite enjoy is this is Australia. We can see a, a map of Australia, which shows all its major cities. And bear in mind, this was years before Google Maps came about. So it may seem quite primitive to us, but it's, um, it would have been really interesting, especially for people living and accessing this website from overseas. We have different um, selection. Uh, we have a selection of different websites of that are related to Australian culture. So we have we can click here and look at libraries in Australia, and we can see what the various um, Australian libraries looked like back in the time. So I can click through, say, to the oh, okay. So yeah, we're already hitting a dead link. This happens quite often when you're researching um, on the web archive. Um, you sort of go down a strange rabbit hole of redirects and, and sometimes broken links. But the, the beauty of using a web browser is you can always use this back button to retrace our steps. And um, yeah, and we can see different library websites. We can see galleries. So we have Australian um, galleries. Again, bearing in mind that this is the Australian Web Archive, it's only going to include Australian content. So unfortunately, um, if you want to click on the Louvre, you might get lucky, but I suspect, yeah. So we get a message saying web, slots, web page snapshot not found. And this is because it simply wasn't saved by the Australian Web Archive because it's a French website. If we go back to this is Australia, click about Australia, and um, gives you information about government at the time. I'm always curious about what was going on in the arts, so we can see various different arts websites as well. So, yeah, okay, it happens from time to time. Theatre Royal Tasmania, yeah. So, it's, it really can be a, a, a process of trial and error. And it's really not perfect. Um, as you might have noticed from time to time, you'll see what we call broken links or broken images where the image doesn't load. So it's not perfect. There are limitations to what the Australian Web Archive can do. And it's not uncommon to see that websites are often incomplete, missing or not functioning properly, which can happen for various reasons. Ultimately, the Web Archive is a collection of individual snapshots of websites, but those websites are often not designed to operate as a single static page. And so when it tries to draw from other content, such as streaming media or images hosted elsewhere, or try to connect to an external database, or redirect to sites that aren't archived, then you're going to encounter some difficulties. The main thing is not to panic. You haven't broken the internet, and you can either try to you know, glean what information you can from the text that's available, or perhaps use the snapshot remote to um, see if you can have better luck. So, for example, if we're looking at Sydney University, you can see that our snapshot has lost a lot of that kind of information, that visual information. But if we click to a previous snapshot, uh, nope. Yeah, it's, this is a classic example. Um, we, can, we can click to other areas and other, other times where um, that information was more of it readily available on the archive. So finally, it's a huge archive. I've, I feel like I've hardly even scratched the surface, but the best way to get used to the web archive is to just go in there and explore. 
as I've demonstrated, um, sometimes you can get really lucky and have quite a seamless experience with the web archive. Sometimes it's about you know, trial and error and trying again and going back to the main um, web page and searching with a few different um, a few different keywords, a few different time, uh, time frames. Um, it's much like any kind of research process, really. Um, it just looks different. But if you go back to the main Trove website, which is where I am, I recommend just exploring to start with. Um, you can see here that we have some curated collections by subject, and we have some featured lists of um, really interesting websites. So I suggest picking a topic and finding a website and practicing using the snapshot remote to go forwards and backwards and maybe just appreciate how much things have changed over time. One of my favorite uh, sites here, for example, uh, iconic Australian brands, where sites like Arnott's Biscuits has changed substantially through the years. Back from 1998, when they won an award for being one of the best Australian websites of the year through, and then through the years, you can see how they've changed. So maybe jump to 2003. 2008. Get that out of the way. And, and back to, and across to present day. Any second now. Yeah, which is quite a journey. So um, we have time for some more questions. We have them. Excellent. Um, so we do have quite a few questions okay. that have been asked. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just. So Tom asked, is there any harvesting of Australian websites from non.au domains such as .com or .org? So. Going back, to what, going back to the beginning, um, we um, draw from various sources. So the dot, dot .au all of domain harvest is one that was a more of an automated uh, process. However, we still have curated content that comes through the Pandora archive. So um, we still have web, web archivists that are seeking out non.au um, content that is of significance to Australia and they generally will contact those um, website owners and let them know that we are interested in hosting them on the Australian Web Archive. Great, and we had an anonymous person uh, sort of continuing on from that international sites that can end in .au. So whether they're um, collected as well, for example, they gave the example of Blogspot as that can be found in numerous ways. I think Blogspot's an interesting one because um, from my understanding off the top of my head, um, it's a Google site um, that uses the .au as kind of a way of mirroring um, the, their, their, not their .com version. And um, I guess the, the, the main way to look, at, look for it is to see if it's, is to search for it on the Trove Australian Web Archive. Um, I know that, um, generally speaking, if the source if the source website is .au, it'll be harvested. However, there may be exceptions. I couldn't say off the top of my head, to be perfectly honest. That's all good. And I think it's something like this, a collection so large, it's always just worth exploring if you have a particular website in mind. Absolutely. Um, Christopher asks, how does the archive play out with paywalls on news websites? Interesting question. Um, so we don't, um, we, we have only harvested sites that are publicly, that were publicly available at the time. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is that <coughs> up until recent years, they were only harvesting um, a lot of sites once a year. So it really depends on when the uh, news report happened and whether it was behind a paywall at the time that the site was harvested. 
So um, again, um, I would go search for it. If it's there, great. If not, then you might have to seek some other avenues for um, looking up news articles um, such as e-resources. Yeah, that's it. The library does have quite a lot of other resources as well. If you do need to um, find something that might not be in the web archive, you can always reach out and contact us. Um, the next question comes from Jill. Is there a standard slash threshold for preserving web content? It was mentioned that content is preserved for their cultural values, etc. I'm just curious about how that is determined. That's an excellent question. And um, I am not a curator, so I <laughs> couldn't comment on that. Um, so I've, I've been focusing on, I guess, the functionality. However, if you want to get in touch with us uh, through our Ask a Librarian service, we can certainly direct you to some more information about that. Great. Um, Tom asks, will the URL of archive sites pages remain stable, e.g. for the purposes of reference and footnotes? So I think that was when you were clicking on the item details and referencing mm. um, within the website. Um, Okay. Um, okay. So what what we've been uh, recommending is if we go there. Uh, there's two ways of referencing um, content that we're looking at on the on the web archive. So oh, where were we? Yeah. So I just picked a random page. Generally speaking, we would use the URL. This should be a permanent link. Um, and here, and in, in fact, it's actually also replicated down the bottom here. So that's, that's the URL that you would use. We also have citation information along here, which references that link. So that should be a permanent link that you can refer to in your citations. Great. Um, Anna has a question. So they have used the Wayback Machine to save websites yep. of candidates, political parties, members and government. Mm -hmm. And there's a Chrome extension allowing that preservation mm -hmm. and it throws up archive pages if a page is expired. How do we know if such sites have been, will be preserved and does the Australian Web Archive have such a capture and recall function for expired sites and how deeply does that preservation level go? So quite a big question, yep. but um, yeah. Yeah, look, um, <coughs> the, the answer off the top of my head is that at the moment we've, um, we've only, we've developed this as a search platform. So, um, yeah, I don't believe that we have that level of functionality, um, in terms of alerting us to the, the, the life, the, the status of, of websites. Um, I guess the main difference between our search and the Wayback Machine, which is, you know, they're, they're both at the core, the same thing, but they have various different functionalities. Um, the Wayback Machine, as you would know, covers content from all, all over the world, um, but it doesn't necessarily have the same level of um, searching um, by keyword. You would need to know the URL. Um, that doesn't really answer your question, um, but again, if you get, get in touch with us um, through Ask a Librarian Service, we can definitely look into that for you. Excellent. So we've got two more questions we'll get to before the, today's session. Um, thank you for everyone for joining us, and we've got two more to get through, um, and then we'll finish up. Um, Acacia asks um, a question, is there a mobile version of the Trove website? If not, is there any plans on creating one? Look, the Trove website's designed um, to be viewable through um, through a web interface, and so we um, it's it's designed so that that is the main um, way of viewing it through a web browser on a mobile device. Um, there are various reasons for that, which I won't go into, um, but yeah, it's optimized for web viewing. Yeah, so that's definitely the best way to access it at the moment. Um, and then Carol asks a question, which I feel is a very big question we might not be able to answer today, but she simply asks, are copyright issues covered? Okay. Um, now, it's a very important issue. Um, and I guess as a library, we abide by the Australian Copyright um, Act, which is partially what's made the web archive available. Um, through that act, um, we are guided through the concept of legal deposit, 
which means that all published materials are available through our services. Now, so we, we have permission to provide access to these websites um, through that legislation. Um, it doesn't mean that people can necessarily just take and use um, content found on the web archive. Um, for that kind of permission, um, we would still need to go back to the actual source, back to the creator of that website. Um, that's a very simple uh, response. As, as um, Ruby mentioned, copyright is a very complex and detailed issue. Um, but again, if you have any concerns about copyright with the web archive, then um, we can uh, get in touch with us and we can um, have a look at your concerns. Oh, and I just wanted to mention one other thing. If you're interested in, um, you know, just keeping a uh, finger on the pulse of the different kind of stuff that's available through the web archive, through our social media um, channels, we are having a weekly feature called Web Archive Wednesdays, where we um, have a look at different you know, gems that we found through the Web Archive. Excellent, thank you. So that's all the questions today. A big thank you to Andrew um, for his presentation today and um, answering all those questions. Very good effort. So we're going to finish up today. Um, as we've mentioned once or twice, if you do have any more follow-up questions, we do here at the National Library have our Ask Librarian service. So that's really good if you have any research questions and things like that. And Trove also has a contact us form as well. If you possibly have more technical issues around the web archive, I'd recommend you ask them through there. Um, but thank you all for joining us today. Here are some of our upcoming sessions. Um, as I mentioned at the start of today's session, we will be sending out an email tomorrow with the recording of today's webinar, including the Q&As at the end, um, as well as that survey as well, if you weren't able to get to that survey link in the chat. Um, but other than that, that's all from us. Um, thank you so much for joining us and have a good rest of the day.